My future mother-in-law is trying to sabotage my relationship. I don't know what to do. This lady is completely out of control. Let's get down to business. I've been with my fiancé, Adam, for five years. We've been engaged for seven months. We have a beautiful home together, and we both work really hard at our relationship. The issue isn't with Adam. He does his very best to try to mitigate the situation with his mother. But it's wearing on him, and I worry that one day he'll have to choose. I don't want him to have to do that. That would hurt him too much to choose between me and his family. There's a lot of situations, but I thought I would highlight the most, or worst, recent one. About three years ago, and one month after we purchased our house, his mom really needed windows in her house. Mold was growing a lot, and some no longer had seals. Now, his mom actually has a sizable savings account. Enough that she can spend her money frivolously on luxury goods and Birkin bags, getting her hair done two times a week, her nails, buying a Mercedes every other year, and so on. However, she never budgets for anything. So she asked him for $25,000 to replace the windows. He said he'd cover them. When he told me, I almost had a heart attack. He said it was a loan and that she'd pay him back. I still have law school debt to cover and we have a larger than we should mortgage. She made a comment to him about how I would let her freeze to death all winter and he had to help her. We took extra on our mortgage to cover the windows. Top of the line, everything. We still have yet to see a dime. I suppose it went into her new GL class. To quote the bard, neither a borrower nor a lender be. Adam and I had a vacation planned a year after the widow's dilemma happened. We decided that we'd go to Europe for two weeks as he's never been. I lived there from the time I was three until I came to America for school. We set our hearts on Spain and rented a lovely apartment in Barcelona for two weeks. It was perfect for two. We planned all the tours, outings around the interest. Adam loves architecture, so we had a few tours solely planned for that. His mother decided she just had to come. And she's never been to Europe either, so she invited herself on our trip. Like I did previously, I tried to appeal to his rational side, but I could not get through to his emotional side. So I just accepted that she'd be coming along. Well, Coach wasn't good enough for her, and she had to have tickets upgraded to business. But she did not want to travel alone, so she pitched in for a seat for Adam to travel with her. I had to remain and coach all alone. Then, she did not want to stay at the apartment because it wasn't, quote, vacation to her. No, she had to stay at the W in Barcelona, where she begged Adam to stay with her. But there wasn't any room for me, apparently, he tried to reason with her, but she cried and said how she was without her husband with her and he passed away before he could go to Europe with her. He passed away a decade ago, by the way. So I stayed at the apartment alone while they stayed at the hotel. We were supposed to meet up for breakfast, but she would never get ready on time. So they would not be down until 11. And we missed out on our all our outings. I definitely felt like a third wheel and questioned why I even bothered to go on the vacation when I could have stayed home and not felt so alone. Well, Adam and I began to discuss wedding plans. I would like to keep it relatively low-key as my family still lives in Europe and cannot attend as my father is very sick and we're worried he may take a turn for the worse. Traveling is just not worth it for him, and I would not want to risk his health for something that's only a day-long event. I told Adam that I would like to just courtroom ceremony it, and his mother and sister, of course, and friends, we'd then take everyone out for a fancy dinner. 
his mother did not, I repeat, did not take kindly to this. She said that if her son was going to get married, it would have to be a grand affair for everyone to see. I just keep looking at my side of the seating chart and the pitiful number of guests. I just want to cry. She's been planning it. I told Adam I did not want this and I expressly told him that I just wanted small, really, really, really small event. No go. She won't even hear him. She just refers to me as her and she and says how I think that I'm too good for a large wedding and that my family's too good for America. That was weird because my family is American. My dad was an ambassador. This hasn't been happening a lot recently, and this time, it's just been one too many. Lately, she's been asking for more together family time. She lives quite close, but we don't see her all that often, as she has friends and events that keep her busy. Not too busy to plan this wedding, though. She has requested that we, Adam and I, have dinner with her three times a week. Well, what's been happening is that she's been reserving a spot at the restaurant for 6 p.m. I don't get home until 6.30. She has just been encouraging Adam to eat out with her, as I'm too thoughtless to come home at a decent hour to eat with her son. How lonely that must be for him, boo-hoo. It honestly doesn't bother me that he goes out to eat with her that often, but the thing that she says behind my back, well, I came home early tonight, I left work and was on the road by 4.30, home by 5.00. I surprised Adam and he was just coming in the door when I yanked the door open to greet him happily. He was so excited to see me. I could come to dinner with him and his mother. I told him I just needed to shower really quickly and get dressed. He called his mom right away and told her that I would be able to make it. He also made a comment stating he hoped there was a reservation for three. She said there was but she thought they'd eat earlier, like 5.30, and was ready on her way out of the house. She got there at 5.15 and stated that she could not wait another second and just had to eat right then and there. Adam said, I'd be ready in just another 15 minutes, and offered to call the restaurant and request they move us back. She wouldn't hear it. She just whined about being hungry and how a poor old woman should be expected to wait so his fiance could fulfill her vain requirement. He came upstairs, asked how long I'd be. I said just a few more minutes. He said his mom's really upset and hungry. If I could skip a step for him so we could leave earlier. I told him to go ahead without me. I would meet them there. That was fine. Well, I got there and the table was for two. Of course, Adam said we could make room, but she said how we'd be inconveniencing everyone and I should just go sit at the bar and she'd try to get it fixed. I had one drink at the bar, then left. Came home, calmed down a bit. Now I'm writing this. First update, update number one. Wowee. I really did not expect this kind of attention, considering I pretty much came to a conclusion, it seems to be the general consensus amongst you, that it's the right one, on my own. But the support, the support you've given me, I'm overwhelmed and feel extremely grateful in a way I could not express. Through private messages, comments, posts, I cried reading them all. Some of you shared words of wisdom. Some share different perspectives, others shared similar experiences. I feel at a loss for words. Anyways, there isn't a very impactful update, but I figured I would update you on what's happened so far and take the opportunity to say thank you. After I posted a comment on my thread and was about two glasses deep into a bottle of red wine, Adam came home. This was extremely late. He sat down beside me and looked defeated. He just looked at me with hopeless eyes. I asked him if he wanted to talk about it. He said he needed time to process everything that's happened. I told him I also needed time. 
He said to me that whatever I wanted to do, he would accept it. So I called up my maid of honor and asked if she would come pick me up and I could stay at her house for the night. Adam and I kissed and he told me he loved me and I left. I haven't been back. From Colleen's house, I made a call the next morning to my office asking for a few more days off to go visit family. So right now, I'm writing to you from my parents' house in Europe. I called Adam and told him my plans. And he asked me if I would let him drive me. I told him I was okay to go myself with Colleen. I would email him when I got home to my family. When I got settled at home, I emailed Adam. I sent him the thread that I made. That Tuesday night, a large majority of you wanted him to read it, so he's read it all. All of your comments... He also read the part where I came to the conclusion on my own that I had to end things. We talked briefly over Skype. He told me he felt raw from the thread, but he was glad that I have gotten things out. He asked me if it was true, if I wanted to break things off or if I still needed time to think. I said I was pretty sure. He asked me for a probability. This is a joke in our relationship for dealing with decisions. I said 90% sure that this was the end for us, and I was using my time away wisely to reconsider everything. For some reasons, his eyes brightened up, and he just told me that we could talk about it when I got back to the States. I wouldn't break up with him over Skype, and I think we have a lot of legalities to go through regarding the house and we have to collect any deposits that are available when we cancel the wedding. Because, well, his mom did not pay for any of the wedding she planned. Anyways, I've had a sit down with my father. He's been feeling better, which is a huge relief. He's offered me two thirds of the cost of the house, so I could either buy it from Adam, pay off the most of the mortgage, or just walk away and buy something by myself. I did not expect this, but he said it would give me options, so I decide what he thinks I have decided. He says he just wants me to have freedom, and that he would not want to see my heart and bank account broken at the same time. So, that's that. Like I said, nothing really happened between Adam and I. I do have more power, though, thanks to my parents, and have been enjoying my time with family. My mom and I have been shopping a lot, and my brother, my dad's doctor, and his family have been coming over for dinner quite a bit. My sister is expected to return from China tomorrow, and I'm very excited to see her. I wish you all happy holidays and hopefully New Year's. Hopefully, my next update will have a conclusion one way or the other. Update number two. Hi, I would first like to apologize for how long this update took. I've been completely swamped at work and things have been happening at home too, so let's get into that. I want to thank everyone again for their continued support and interest in my relationship issues. Sincerely, the advice and shared experiences has made everything a lot clearer. Also, Adam has been following along. Firstly, I specifically want to thank everyone who defended and supported Adam. I don't see him as a bad guy, and I really would not be vindictive. So passive-aggressive comments while leaving or making rude comments to him, or anything really mean-hearted, I couldn't do that to him. He has supported me emotionally through getting my MBA, helped me study for my LSATs. He read over my essays to apply to law schools. He did mock interviews with me, he sat through boring orientations, stayed up all night with me when I was sick with nerves before taking the bar exam. He was my cheerleader when I ran my first triathlon. He's my champion when I see a house centipede. He's my dream man, and I would never give up my relationship with him if I did not feel like I was fighting a losing battle. Now, are you guys ready for the real shocker? Someone made a comment in the update that he would be outside my parents' house if he really wanted it to work. Well, he took your advice to heart. He was outside with his bags and a rental on the evening of the 24th. 
I, uh, I was taken aback. And I blurted out, what the duck are you doing here? He just laughed and said he wanted to talk about everything. It could not wait until I got back. He's been reading all the comments on the threads, and he felt like they were very eye-opening. He browsed Raised by Narcissist and felt very moved by the similarity some of the posters have with their parents. He said that he spent the last few days thinking about what went down at the restaurant with his mother and how the look in his eyes and my eyes when I looked after him after I realized what happened broke his heart. What I did not know was that he and his mother got into a row after I went to sit at the bar, fighting about me and how this just doesn't feel free. How his sister used to say she had the same problems, but since she moved far away, it's died down a lot. A lot of people ask me why I put up with this for so long. I tried to remember when this really started happening. When it stopped appearing like a regular mother-in-law, quote, don't want to lose my son, comments, and began to feel like isolation and vehemence. We used to have an okay relationship when we first met. Sometimes we'd go shopping together, and once we got our nails done. It was around when Adam and I purchased the house together. That's when it really started to get bad. The windows accident wasn't the first really big issue I remember. When she realized we were serious about each other. So, back to when we were at my parents' house. Yeah, we had a serious heart-to-heart. -heart. I bared everything to him, and he did the same. So, there was no extreme confession of incest or physical abuse. It was just that he thinks he was raised by a narcissist who saw her control of her son. He pride and joy slipped away. We came to a decision. Here is what happened and we decided on December 27th. We went back to the United States after New Year's Day, a couple days before me, and moved his stuff out of our place to a friend's. He did not want me to have to be inconvenienced for changes he had to make. We have put our engagement on hold for the time being. He canceled all the plans with his mother. He's been seeing a therapist since the middle of January pretty consistently two to three times a week. I've been to four sessions with him. His mother has not. We've sort of begun dating each other again. I've been talking to his sister and the things their mother put her through. Adam is very lucky now. Okay, about his mother. He's decided to give her one last chance to go to therapy with him, and he stated that if she does not, he'll be going to cut contact with her. We have a lot to rebuild on, but... I know we can do it together. Alright, final update. It's been a long time. We're all a year older. Adam and I will be composing this thread together. Oh no, I gave away the ending. Yes, we're together. In fact, we're married. Here goes the last time we left off. Adam was seeing a shrink, still is, to try to unwind some of the damage his mother did. We were living separately for the time being. Adam's mother tried to commit suicide, but no really. She called emergency services before she tried and did not even have time to swallow more than two pills. It's so scary to think that within his mind, there was such an abusive past when he was always such a happy exterior. My husband, man that's fun to say, <laughs> was basically traumatized by his own mother his entire life, as was his sister. I had alluded before in one previous thread that Adam's sister had it a lot worse than Adam when they were younger, but when Adam's father died, his mom locked in on him. So, Adam's dad died of kidney failure. However, Adam had donated one of his kidneys to try to save him, his father's body rejected the donation and passed away about 11 years ago this coming April. His mother took it upon herself during his grieving process to manipulate him into believing he killed his own father. And she was alone now because of him. That if he wanted to repair what he did to her, he'd treat her better. Every time he thought that he could get away and create his own life and feel free, she would remind him. 
the windows, for example. I only heard the part where she blamed me, but I tried to think back to the conversation and really try to hear what Adam had said. It's about four years ago now, but he was telling me at the moment that the reason her house was falling down was because she no longer had a man to take care of it. Because he killed his dad. He was trying to tell me I just wasn't able to understand what it meant. Same with the vacation to Barcelona. She was doing it in front of me now. When he was younger, a lot of these issues had begun regarding academic success or athletic success. She did not have any issues then with girlfriends or anything. She just viewed her children as extensions of herself. It was bad. It just wasn't the level of guilt-inducing insanity it is today. Let's get back now to the present. Adam's psychologist has suggested Adam offer his mother a chance to come to therapy to work out issues. He wasn't able to propose this to her at the time because of her, quote, suicide attempt. She whisked herself away on a cruise to get some much-needed R&R. Whatever. Oh my gosh, you think he was asking her to murder puppies with the way she went on? So, that's that. No contact. She's tried, but Adams either ignored her phone calls with unknown numbers, or we had our locks changed. And his work has strict instructions not to let her pass through the doors. She moved to where Adam's sister lives in July, but I know that his sister, since we're close, has been no contact with her since she met her husband. We wrote off the 25 grand we either get it back in probate court, an inheritance, or not at all. I'm really choked up about it. Not enough to do any extra work to get it back right now, especially since Adam's worried she'll still use it as leverage to buy back in. We ended up getting married in September, flew out to be with my parents this week to renew our vows in their house. And we're going to have our honeymoon in Fiji come January. My dad isn't doing so well, but he always seems to fluctuate like that. However, my brother's not optimistic this time. Anyways, we're wondering, since you have all been so supportive, if you would do us just one small favor. Adam and I are going to have a grieving ceremony for his father, so he can process it correctly without manipulation. For any of you who lost parents, what helped you get through it? Drop it in the comments below. Thank you everything. We wish that we could have invited each and every one of you to our wedding, but that would be creepy. The latest Mr. Reddito producer, Christine Billings. Thank you so much for the support.